the book of Ecclesiastics. I hadn't preached in that book in a long time. The ninth chapter of the book of Ecclesiastics. Amen? Amen. And I've been thinking about this message and preparing it. And I might have to wind up doing a part two. But I ask that you pray much for me. Amen? Amen. And I just thank God for the traveling mercy once again. Amen. Being able to be back in your midst and all that we went through. And all, all that we was up against. Amen? I saw the enemy trying to display himself, but the devil is a liar and the father of it. Amen. And I claim the victories of those lives we came in contact with, even if it's a word of encouragement. Amen. Many cried and shed tears. Many looked with awe, and many uh, were rebellious as they come. Yes. I got them in my family, everything from crackheads to drugheads, uh, alcoholics, perverts. I got them all in my family, but nevertheless, I'm just trusting the Lord for them. Amen? Yeah. I ain't just talking about my mama's side. I'm talking about my daddy's side, too. But you know what? God is good anyhow. Amen? Yeah. It's good to know that. Amen? Yeah. Chapter 9, uh, we're going to be starting of Ecclesiastic chapter 9, starting at verse 1. Now, all this last few weeks, even before I went down to North Carolina, I just, I just asked God to be with me. And as I was studying and reading God brought to my heart uh, this message today. And if I were to put a title on today's message, I would say, Lord, give me a holy chance. I don't think y'all heard that. Reach around to somebody and touch him and say, Lord, give me a holy chance. Now, you know, you know when we hear the word chance, uh, <laughs> We, we oftentimes uh, think about uh, uh, how often we use that word chance. And only God can give you a holy chance. Uh, let me define the word and then I'll get into the message. But the word chance means, uh, the word chance can be a noun, a verb, or an adjective. It can be all three, which is very unique. Uh, it means the happening event, a risk, an opportunity, a possibility, a probability. It can be accidental. The word chance means to have the fortune, to find, or to meet by chance, the likelihood, or relying on. The word chance defined meaning is the power of uncertainty, fate, fortune, hazard, and casualty. It is lot, it is accidental luck, our outcome. It is an adventure, a future, or an occurrence. It is a purpose, and the word chance means an aim, or something unexpectedly happening. The word chance means in case of fate. But only God can give you a holy chance. Amen. Look at somebody and say, only God, only God can give you a holy chance. You see, a holy chance is based on our determination to know God for ourselves. Amen. Come on, somebody. A holy chance is based on our determination. When you are determined, you heard of the Terminator, haven't you? Well, we got to be stronger than the Terminator. Because it is our determination to know God for ourselves. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. God give you and me chances to pick up the pieces. I don't know about you, but thank God for helping me pick up the pieces. Amen. So now I took the word chance, and to show you how often that we use it, let me just go down the list. Everybody look at somebody and say, only God can give you a chance. Only God can give you a holy chance. Now, we've heard the word chance, and you use it in many phrases, and I'm just going to say a few of them. Sometimes you say, chances are. Sometimes we say, this is your last chance. Sometimes we say, please give me a chance. Sometimes we say, give me another chance. And then sometimes we say, give me a second chance. And we'll say, it's good chance. And then we'll say, it's a million and one chances. And then we'll say only chance that you got. And we'll say a chance to win at a football game, a basketball game. You know, sometimes when the score is tied in a few seconds, give me a chance to win. 
Sometimes we say, what are the chances of? Sometimes we say, I got a chance to run and hide now. And sometimes we say, I'm looking for a chance. Y'all use these phrases, and sometimes we say, chances of beating the odds are this thing. And then sometimes we say, there's a real chance. Sometimes we say, your chances have improved. Sometimes say, if by chance, come on somebody. Somebody say, chances change, uh, your chances are running out. The other time we use the phrase, chances says, give me a chance to get away. There are times when we use the phrase, this is your chance, don't mess it up. You heard that? Yeah. We've heard the expression say, give your life a living chance. Amen. You've heard the expression, give him or her another chance. She messed up, he messed up, give him another chance. Amen. Sometimes we say, by chance, you can make it. Amen. There are times when we say, how do you like those chances? And then we go and say, it's a slim chance. Ain't that right? Amen. Do this sound like sometimes you don't realize you, how often you use the word chance, do you? And then we'll say, there's a chance that you might survive. You know, when I think about those, those uh, young boys over there in Viet, what was it? Viet, over there in China somewhere, they got caught in the cave? Thailand. Thailand. We, we thought about them. Are they going to make it? Chances are they might. But they survived. Yeah. Chances are they survived. And thank God for the prayers around the world. Even though the enemy was trying to destroy them in that cave, even though they got trapped, chances are they survived. Because you see, you don't know what purpose that God has for them. Chances to get through what they got through. There's a chance to get out of the way. And then the last few says, chances to make it. Look at somebody and say, I got a chance to make it to heaven. Then we say there's a chance to see, a chance to overcome. And then I realize there's a chance to change. Amen. Everybody look at somebody and say, there's a chance, there's a chance. to have a holy change. A holy change. Mm, mm, mm. Now, wait a minute. When we look at Solomon in the book of Ecclesiastics, chapter 9, verses 1, bear with me for a moment. It says here, and all this I considered in my heart even to declare all this, that the righteous and the wise and their works are in the hands of God. You believe that? Amen. Everything you do is in the hands of God. Amen. You might not know it or recognize it, but it's still in the hand of God. Amen. No man know either love or hate, but that is before them. All things come alike to all. There is one event to the righteous, and then there's another event to the wicked. To the good and to the clean, to the unclean and to him that sacrifice, and to him that sacrifice not is good, and so is the sinner and he that swear as he that feareth an oath. Verse 3 says, this is an evil among all things that are done under the sun, that there is one event unto all. Yet also the heart of sons of men is full of evil and madness. And in their hearts, while they live, and after that they have go, go to the dead. Verse 4 says, For him that is joined to all the living, there is hope. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. Y'all don't want to hear that. <laughs> you call me a scared dog, but at least I'm alive. You know, a lion, he can be bold, but he can get killed. So a living dog is better than a dead lion. Verse 5 says, for the living know not that they shall die. For the living know that they shall die. But the dead know nothing, anything. Neither have they any more a reward. For the memory of them is forgotten. Also, their love and their hatred and their envy is in no, I'm sorry, is now perished. Neither have they any more a portion forever in any thing that is done under the sun. Verse 7 says, go thy way now, Solomon tells you and me, go on your way, eat thy bread with joy, and drink thy wine with a merry heart. For God now accept thy works. Let thy garment be always white. Everybody say, let your garment, let your garment. always be white. Always white. Don't y'all act like y'all ain't been to a white party before. I ain't talking about with white folks, I'm talking about putting on all white. 
and not getting nothing dirty. Because when you got on something white, what is your whole ambition? It's not to get, come on somebody. You got on white pants, white shirt, white suit, white socks, white tie. Come on somebody, white hat. You trying all day long, I ain't going to hug nobody because I'm going to get this thing dirty. Come on somebody. But he's talking about your soul. He's talking about not getting your soul entangled with the world, the uncleansedness. So he goes on to say, uh, let your, thy garment be always white. Let thy head lack no ointment or oil. Live joyfully with the wife of whom thou lovest all the days of thy life, all thy vanity, which he hath given thee under the sun all the days of thy vanity, for that is the, thy portion in this life. And in thy labor which thou takest under the sun. A few more verses here. And whatsoever thy hands, whatever your hands find to do, do it with all your might. Amen. My God, you have no idea when you do something for somebody else how it's helping them along the way. Amen. Even when you don't feel like it, because when your enemy is hungry and you feed them, I'm here to tell you God will compound the blessings in your life. I'm here to tell you, God will open up the windows of heaven because by you helping those that hate you and despise you, I'm here to tell you, you can take hot coals and throw it on the head. You can show forth the love of God in a time where others may hate you and despise you. But he says, go on now. And whatever you find your hands find to do, do it with all their might. For there is no work, no device, no knowledge, no wisdom in the grave wherever thou goest. Amen. Verse 11 says, and then I return, Solomon says, after all that I went through, I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swiftest and that the battle is not to the strong, neither yet bread always to the wise, not yet riches to men of understanding, not yet favor to men of great skills, but by time and by chance. Oh, my Lord. By time and by chance. What did he say? By time. Everybody say, and by time. And chance. and chance. It happened to them all. It to them all. Isn't it a blessing to know that God has got you Amen. in his hand? Amen. Isn't it a blessing to ain't by a chance? Amen. But I'm going to take it even farther and say, whatever you've been through, whatever you're going through, whatever you're dealing with, you can cry out and say, Lord, I need a holy chance Amen. to get through what I'm going through. I don't know about you, but sometimes I wake up in the morning, I don't just want a chance, I want a holy chance. A holy chance to get it right. A holy chance to walk right. A holy chance to sing right and to pray right. I need a holy chance. See, if I wait on man, chances are he might let me down. But God would never let me down. Because I can depend on him. I can trust in him. I can hope in him. When I'm on the highway, give me a holy chance. When I'm walking down the street, give me a holy chance. When I'm at a restaurant, give me a holy chance. When I'm sitting up in church, Lord, please give me a holy chance. Look at somebody and say, Lord, give me a holy chance. My, my, my. You might not understand where I'm coming from this morning. Ha. Huh. When I look at the word and think of how good God been to you and me, how many holy chances he gave you? How many times you've been in trouble, but he gave you a holy chance? How many times you got in trouble and couldn't get out, but yet his holy hand came down and gave you a holy chance? I think, I think y'all just thinking about the word, but think about how holy the chances are. Chances are you might not have made it, but God said, I'm going to give him a holy chance. You could have been in a bad accident, but God said, I'm going to give him a holy chance. Sometimes things we're going through and don't understand it, but yet God intercedes. God, come in, and he gives you a holy chance. Amen. Sometimes when your money don't always add up and you wonder how that got done, God gave you a holy chance. Amen. So 
Every day when you have a relationship and it seems to be padded away, but God can bring things back together, he's giving that family a holy chance. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. That when you was in trouble and didn't know what to do, God stopped and gave you a holy chance. It won't by chance that it happened. Huh. God gave you a holy chance. It won't in some man's decision. It was God intervening. He's the one that gave you a holy chance. When others wanted to fire you and get rid of you, God said, I know not in my God of a second chance, but I can multiply your chance. Amen. Wait a minute. What are you saying, Pastor? I think about her. All the different men that day when, when Jesus and Mount Mark chapter 15, and you can read it when you get a chance, but I oftentimes think about uh, uh, Jesus when that morning, you figure after 33 and a half years, he had been studying, studying the scriptures and knowing the scriptures, and uh, he knew he was getting close to his time that he must die for the world. And I oftentimes thought about it, and I was thinking about this even down in North Carolina. I got to thinking about uh, that particular morning, that particular day, we knew that he was eating supper with his last, his disciples, the last supper. Mm -hmm. He was talking to all those and giving them parables of his last days. And yeah. through the years as he was studying the scripture, knowing that the time that he lived in, that the death that he, was, he would endure would have to be a capital punishment. Knowing that it was the uh, capital part of the day was crucifixion. He had probably seen a crucifixion and been around him and experienced it and saw the horrible beating of those who were being crucified. And yet as the days and the months went by, he turned 32 and, and when he turned 33, he began to realize time is getting heavy now. Come on, somebody. Time is getting tight and he could feel, he began to tell the disciples that he was going to leave, but he would be back. Uh, he told them that he was going to die, but in three days, he was going to rise again. But this particular morning, I, I got to thinking about when Jesus was down and as he was beaten and whipped and scorned and rebuked and mocked, and they mocked him all his life. Come on, somebody. We see in the scripture that while he was, was there, that particular day, all those that were around him and saw him whipped and beat and scorned, I can, I can uh, think in my mind, there was a man that came all the way from Egypt, all the way from Africa, all up above Libya, that we know as today by the name of Simon of Syria. Mm -hmm. This man came thousands of miles to be there in Jerusalem for the Passover feast. Not knowing that that day was going to be a holy day. Not knowing that that day was going to be a holy chance. Yes. And can you imagine him walking in the city, and the city was already crowded. Mm -hmm. People was overlapped because of the feast and the Passover. Mm -hmm. But Jesus, can you imagine in his mind, he knew that his time was coming. He's thinking, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Moses uh, was led by God uh, out of, and led the people out of Egypt into the promised land, and it was a Passover meal. And surely as Jesus was getting close to the Passover, he knew that he was going to be the Passover lamb. Come on now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My, my, my. Mm -hmm. Are y'all with me on this? Oh, yes, Lord. And as time went by, there were many that were involved uh, in the beginning, not only the beating and the scourging of his back and the beating and, and mocking him. The Bible said they even cast lot for his outer garment. Mm -hmm. But that day when they had beat him and scorned him, there was uh, this man, Simon the Cyrenian, all the way up from Libya, and then they had Barabbas on lockdown, and there were two other thieves that was planning to be crucified that day. But I want you to understand something. Out of all the men and women and all the Marys and, and the chief priests and all the, uh, the, the uh, other men and women and the disciples standing around watching and observing this, while Jesus was walking down the road of Belarusa, Huh. While he was carrying his cross, mm -hmm. the Bible said this man, uh, Simon of Serenia, was somewhere in the crowd. And he didn't know it, but God had him picked out. Come on now. Come on. I said, you might not have recognized it, but God got you picked out. Yeah. You might not understand how God is operating, but God was giving him a holy chance. This man that was in the crowd, there he was standing and watching and seeing who is this man. Mm -hmm. 
What have he done to be carrying that cross? That cross was bloodstained. It was heavy. And for some reason, that Roman, that Roman soldier seemed to grab Simon out of the crowd. Maybe he was a strong, strappy man. Maybe he was a man that was in prison because inquiring minds want to know why is this man carrying this cross? But the Bible said they, that the Roman soldier grabbed him and compelled him to carry the cross. My, my, my. That day, that man came a great distance and God gave him a holy chance. A chance to bear the cross that Jesus carried. But that man who carried the cross was one burden. But Jesus carried your burdens and my burdens on his heart. He carried it to the cross that we might have eternal life. You ought to be thankful today that God gave you a holy chain. Not only Simon from Cyrenian, but he gave Barabbas a chain. Not only Barabbas, but he gave the centurion a chain. Not only the centurion, but he gave the chief priest a chain. Not only the chief priest, but Pilate was there. Everybody that was looking had an opportunity to get a holy chain. You might not know it, but you was there. Because he gave you a holy chain. You might not understand it, but you're alive today because he gave you a holy chain. I didn't come back to pat you on the back. I come to tell you that God is still in charge and that he's giving out holy chances. Oh, my Lord. When I think about, when I think about, Peter was there. John James was there. When I think about Bartholomew was there. When I think about all the disciples was looking. And he was giving them a holy chance. He was giving them an opportunity to receive what he was about to do. All those that looked and was amazed. They came from all walks of life. Who is this man? Why is he being crucified? You might not understand it now, but right this moment, God is giving you a holy chance. God is giving you an opportunity to turn your life around. Chances are you can make it if you try. Chances are you can overcome whatever ails you. Oh my God, what a mighty God we serve. What a wonderful God we serve. Well, you didn't think you were gonna make it, God gave you a chance. God gave you an opportunity. God brought you out of nowhere. Put your feet on a solid rock. Come on, somebody. Gave you a place to stand, a place to worship, that you, you can give him the glory. My, my, my. That day, they didn't know it, but the whole world got a holy chance. That day, from the charge of the king down to the poor man in the dream, got a holy chance. Jesus, I came to fulfill the will of my father. They might not have understood it. They may not have been able to comprehend it. But the way I see it, God is truly a good God. He's not only part time. He don't work sporadically. But God is good all the time. And all you gotta do is give God the praise. Think about his holiness. They're still saying. If you're gonna rock, come on and rock with Jesus. If you're gonna sing, come on and sing with Jesus. If you're gonna shout, Come on and shout with Jesus. If you're going to pray, go on and pray with Jesus. I don't know about you, but I thank God this morning for giving me a holy chance to be able to cross the street. A holy chance to be able to walk out of my house. A holy chance to put on shoes and 
when I get to the place uh, where I need to be, uh, I can put off the shoes because I'm standing on holy ground. The God we serve is a holy God. He said, there shall be no other God before me. There's no other God after me. He said, I'm God all by myself. I don't know about you this morning, but I want to give God the praise. I want to thank God for a holy change. Look to somebody that says, give your fruit before it rot. Oh, y'all don't want to hear that. Look to somebody that says, give your fruit before it rot. Come on, somebody. You see them watermelons a season. You got to cut in them and eat them now. You can't save them all summer. Come on, somebody. And where I'm from, you eat the watermelon through the red right down to the rind. <laughs> never mind, never mind. You don't know where I'm coming from. You ain't, if you ain't had a good watermelon when you're eating the wine, there's something wrong with that watermelon. Come on, somebody. And praise God for watermelons. Amen? Amen. <laughs> you see, it's important that we understand that God ain't just the God of today. He is the God of yesterday and tomorrow. Amen. Come on, somebody. And when I think about my dear brother, the king of Israel, uh, the great king of Judah, King Hezekiah. Everybody know him, and Hezekiah had a way about him. The Bible said he feared God, and he, he ruled, uh, fearing and honoring God all the days of his life. Yeah. The Bible said that the scripture uh, uh, depicted that one day that Hezekiah got sick. Uh, it's interesting that he got sick. The Bible said he had boils on his flesh. And he was at the point of death. The Bible said Isaiah the prophet, God spoke to him and told him, go tell King Hezekiah. Tell him, get his house. Hey, hey, hey. Get your house in order. Get it together. Come on, somebody. You're getting ready to check out now. You've been in the tabernacle for a long time. But God want to take you out of that building. God want to take you out of that body and bring you home. He said, you get your house in order. Get your house in array. Get it straightened out. Get things together before you leave here. Y'all don't hear me this morning. But God was giving him a holy chance. Yeah, Isaiah went and told Hezekiah, get your house in order. You're going to die. Amen. Many times we got loved ones, family, and friends. Huh? That are in the hospital and they're sick. And we so eagerly want to pray that God will recover them. But you don't understand, it ain't our will, but it's the will of God. Yes. That's why when you go and pray for folks, you got to say if it's the Lord's will. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. We say it's God's will to raise him up. We don't know that. Amen. We might feel that, but we got to do what God say. Hezekiah was told by Isaiah, you're going to die. And started bringing good news. He brought some sad news. Nobody who died with an affliction of cancer, HIV, want to hear any bad news. Come on, somebody. But the man had to do what God told him to do. Look at somebody and say, thank God for a holy chance. Oh, my, my. The Bible said he didn't talk long. He didn't say much. He just told him to get himself together. Look around and tell somebody by here and say, you better get yourself together. See, some of y'all don't want to say that. Come on, somebody. It's important that we understand getting yourself together means you get on the right path. Stay on the right path. Live the right path. And when you mess up, Lord, I need a holy chance. Come on, Lord, I messed up today. Give me a holy chance. Lord, I said something wrong. Give me a holy chance. Lord, I spoke out of turn. Give me a holy chance. Lord, I jumped. To conclusion, please give me a holy chance. Because sometimes we jump to conclusion. Oh, you don't know how bad. I don't know about you, but I need a holy chance every day. In every way. Amen. This man, Hezekiah, this king, was sick and afflicted. He couldn't get up out of bed and do what he had to do. And the Bible said, when he heard the great prophet Isaiah tell him, thus said the Lord God, the Bible said, all he did was turn over. Looked at the wall. Come on, somebody. Amen. The Bible said, 
tears begin to fall. Yeah. I don't hear y'all talking this morning. The tears begin to come down. The Bible said he wept solely. Yeah. The Bible said on top of the tears that he, 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 he prayed a prayer. On, Lord, you know I served you. Come on, Holy all the days of my life, I try to do good in thy sight. Whatever you gave me a command to do, I try to be obedient. I try to live right. I try to walk right. I try to keep your statutes and obey your commandment. The Bible said he reminded God of his promises. Oh, y'all don't hear me right now. You see, if there's anything in the midst of my tears and in the midst of my past, the Lord, please give me a holy chance. Now, some of us may say, the man who lived too long, you might not want to hear this. Because some of us say, Lord, if you give me another year, if you heal my body, I promise I won't do that no more. I promise I won't do that no more. I promise I won't do this no more. As soon as God raised you up, you're back to your same old tricks. But you ought to lift up your hand this morning and say, Lord, I thank you for a holy chance. Lord, I thank you for a holy chance. God could have killed your day, but he gave you another chance. He gave you a holy chance. Oh, my God. Some of y'all are supposed to be dead. Some of y'all are supposed to be six feet under. But look what God has done. Look what God has beautified the meat with salvation. Look how God took you through what you've been through. The doctor said you're going to die. But God said you're going to live. The doctor said you're not going to make it. Chances are you might die from this. But God said, I'm the God that can heal you in the morning. I can heal you in the new day. I can heal you at night. So Hezekiah, I mean, he threw down some tears. His prayer was so powerful that the Bible said after King, uh, the prophet Isaiah turned and got to the middle court. Come on, somebody. The God I serve is a right now God. He can answer prayer right now because he's a holy God and his presence is everywhere. Somebody said, uh, well, what's more and faster than light? Somebody said, it's air. I take it a step farther. What's more than air is God's presence. You have to thank God that God is everywhere. It don't matter whether you're in the south or out west. It doesn't matter whether you're in the basement or in the ceiling. God is everywhere. Come on, somebody. God was down in that canyon and in that cave with all those young boys. Oh, y'all don't have to say amen. But God gave them a holy chance. I saw one of the young boys telling the TV camera, he put up a prayer. He said, pray for me. Pray for us. That God would get us out of this mess. It is a metaphor for today. The creek has rise, and it don't look like you're going to get out. Chances are it don't look like you're going to make it. But God said, I'm a God that gives holy chance. I can bring you out of any situation and any circumstance. Can't you see God trying to talk to his people? Well, you know the story. Hezekiah was crying. He cried up something. He cried so that it got God's attention. He cried so that God moved. The Bible said that God spoke to Isaiah the prophet. While he hadn't gone far, God heard the king's cry. He saw the king's fear. He knew he was in trouble. But God said to Isaiah, go back. Go ahead on back. 
where he's laying on the bed. Tell him, I know he's going through. Tell him, I see what he done. I seen over the years. I seen his faithfulness. I seen his righteousness. I seen his holy living. I'm going to give him a holy chance. I'm going to take away the sickness. I'm going to take away the affliction. I'm going to raise him up in three days. He's going to go back into the temple and he's going to give me the praise because I'm the God of the living and not the God of the dead. God is not dead, but God is alive. Isaiah went on back. I said Isaiah went on back. But this time, he got some good news. Look at somebody, touch him by the hand, and say, that's some good news. My God. You can see your eyes here. Going into Hezekiah. And you can see Hezekiah sitting up in bed. Come on, somebody. I know if I was Isaiah and I looked at Hezekiah and then I was Hezekiah and looked at Isaiah, I would say to myself, I know he got some good news this time. I know he got something because I didn't throw down some prayer. I didn't throw down some tears. I know that God knows who I am and he knows where I live. He can heal me. Reach around and tell somebody and say, we serve a holy God. Oh, 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 oh. Wait a minute. Oh, oh, oh. oh, Isaiah told Hezekiah, God heard you. Look around and tell somebody and say, God heard you. I say, God heard you. Come on, somebody. He heard you when you was going through. He heard you when you was broke. He heard you when you were busted and disgusted. He heard you when you didn't think you were going to make it through. When others knock you down and bounce you around, he said, I heard you when you was going through. I was there when you didn't know. Isaiah said, God heard you. He heard your prayer. And on top of your prayer, he seen your tears. And because he heard your prayer and seen your tears, God that we serve know how to multiply. I said, God told him, not only am I going to heal you, and in three days you're going back up to the temple to praise God, but I'm going to have 15 more years. Can you imagine that? Look at somebody and say, guaranteed 15 years. Wait a minute. Who can get a guarantee from God? Amen. You might get one from the car dealership. Maybe some eyeglasses or, or some, some type of uh, 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 something you order over the internet. You might get some guarantee. But God guaranteed 15 more years. Amen. Can you imagine that? Guarantee. When the enemy say, I'm going to kill you, God, you got that guarantee. I said, when the enemy said he's going to try to destroy it, you can say, I got a guarantee. The Bible said that when Isaiah told King Hezekiah that he's going to live 15 more years, he says, what kind of sign or guarantee do I get with this? This is what I love about King Hezekiah. Smart, real smart. He said, what do you want? The sun down to go 10 paces forward or 10 paces backwards? He said, 10 paces forward when the sun is going, that's an easy thing. But if God were to push the time back, oh, thank God. <laughs> The God we serve is a holy God. So that means he's passing out holy chances. And when God 
say something, God can bring it to pass. The Bible said it's not a hard thing for God. God took the sun and moved it back 10 hours. So listen to what God did. He gave him 15 years and 10 hours. Guaranteed. I don't know about you. I'm, I'm like the Louisiana cooker. That gumbo is guaranteed. My God, my God. What a mighty God we serve. He can guarantee whatever he say. The God we serve can guarantee whatever he say. He's got angels to back it up. And if God ain't got enough angel, he can make more angels. Lift up your right hand and say, Lord, I thank you for giving me a holy chance. You might have messed up, but God straightened it up. In other words, if you was a monk, you would have monked up. But God gave you a holy chance. When the others looked at you and rolled their eyes and sucked their teeth, God gave you a holy chance. When others said you weren't going to get that house or get that job, God gave you a holy chance. When others looked at you and said you can't have that automobile and them shoes you got on, they were once with a hand in the bottom. But God gave you not only one pair, but God gave you two pairs. Sometimes we forget where God brought us from. Sometimes we overlook the blessings that God bestowed upon us. Come on, somebody. See, one thing I learned about church folks, they're reading the right book, but they're listening to the wrong people. Amen. <laughs> oh, my God. And then I realized, Minister Green, they're not only reading, in some cases, the wrong book, but they're listening to the wrong people. Uh-huh. And they're always wondering how come they're in trouble because they're not giving God that we serve a holy chance. If you give God a holy chance, an opportunity to work a miracle in your life because he's still in the miracle working business. How many need a miracle? My God. Can you imagine the sun down going back 10 paces? Come on, somebody. God can do that. He did it in the book of Joshua. So somewhere along the way, man is missing one day. NASA has reported when they calculated time and existence of mankind, they can come up to one day that's missing, and it's right here. Because God moved the time back. Wouldn't you like to repeat something but get it right? Come on, somebody. Well, you can do it today. Look at somebody and say, you can get it right today. My God, my God. What a wonderful God we serve. You see, it's important that when God bless you, come on, somebody, that you give God the praise. When God opened up the windows of heaven, opened up circumstances and situation, and began to bestow upon you his blessings, they can come anywhere, anyhow, at any moment. That's God's holy chance coming into your life. Amen. All you got to do is stop and say, Lord, I thank you for this holy opportunity, this holy chance. You may not recognize it, but when God comes to save you, you are a holy vessel, and therefore he's giving you a holy chance. You might call it a Kodak moment. Come on, somebody. I call it a divine moment because it's holy. Come on, somebody. You know how many times God could have took you up out of here? Come on, somebody. How many times some of y'all been shot at? Come on, somebody. And the bullet went way past your head. Come on, somebody. How many times you could have ran in the back of somebody or somebody could have ran in the back of you, but the angel says, how many times that you were sucking on a piece of candy and it got choked but the angel hit you in the back and you threw up the candy because God gave you a holy chance how many 
time you've been sitting in bed and your heart skipped the beat. And the devil trying to kill you, but God said, a oh, holy change. What a mighty God we serve. When I think about all the men and women in the scriptures, I think about this woman within the city of Kaul, Beth Machar. And the Bible said that in this scripture there was a, a wise woman. And, and, and let me just give you the background before I get into that. The Bible said David was a king, and, and Amasa was connected with Sheba. Sheba was a male who had rebelled against David, who had killed men, and Amasa was tied into Sheba, and they rebelled against David in an insurrection to take over Jerusalem. And Joab was David, captain of the army. And the Bible said that, that when they was pursuing this man, Sheba, he was running to try to get away from David and Joab. And they ran into a master. And a master asked him, Is your health well? And he says, Yes. And the Bible said, Joab took out a knife and stabbed him in the heart. Because he had conferred and he had opposed David, the king of Israel. The Bible said that when he stabbed him under the fifth rib, he left him in the highway in his own blood. Oh, y'all ain't with me right now. You know what I'm saying? These men was out to kill David, an anointed man of God. And Joab interceded. And the Bible said that a master was crying so loud, he was hollering in the highway. When he died, the Bible said he was wobbling back and forth in his own blood. The Joab dragged him out of the highway and threw him in the field by messing with the man of God. That's not my prophet. That's not my anointed. And I heard him say, do my prophets. Look at somebody and say, I ain't going to harm you. I'm not going to harm you. We try to tell somebody that says, you've been anointed. Because there's a holy chance on you. My Lord. The Bible said he was hollering and screaming, and everybody that came by saw a mass out there hollering and screaming. You know what? <laughs> he gave him a chance. Go with David and us. But he broke bad. And he got a, he got a knife in the heart for breaking bad. The Bible said that after they killed a master, they pursued after Sheba. And the Bible said he was running, and David said, I don't care where he go, pursue him, because this man is worse than Absalom. Absalom was a son of David that tried to rebel against David and take over the kingship, and he was pursuing, but Absalom got killed. Now Sheba, who was a Benjamite, decided to take over the kingship. And David said, pursue him unless he get in one of those cities. Now this is where the story comes in of this wise woman that saved the whole city. Look at somebody and say, didn't you know one wise woman can save the whole city? Wait a minute, what you trying to say, Pastor? I'm saying a wise woman can save the whole city. The Bible said that when Joab rolled up on, on this city called uh, ba ba ma -cha, this place that was fortified, he was going to tear the wall off the gate. He was going to tear the city gates off the wall and destroy and burn the whole city. And the Bible said this wise woman came to the gate of the city and said, are you looking for somebody? <laughs> And Joab said, we're pursuing a man that we know is in there. Mm -hmm. And she said, wait a minute, you want to burn and destroy the whole city over one man? Mm -hmm. She said, let's go old school. <laughs> That's what she said. She said, I'm a daughter of Israel. Yeah. I'm a peaceful and 
and a faithful servant of God. Are y'all with me on this? You see, God gave her the unction of a holy faith. God gave her the unction to have a holy chance. And all the, all the people of the city didn't know that Joab came up with an entourage to burn and destroy the city over one man that was in the city. She said, I tell you what. This wild woman said, I tell you what. Don't tear down the city walls. This is what we're going to do. We're going to go back in there and we're going to find Sheba. And we're going to chop his head off and throw his head over the city wall. I know y'all don't want to hear that. Don't you understand? If I were you and those that you know, you can tell them face to face. If I were you, I wouldn't play with God. Wait a minute. The Bible says she went back inside, told the men in the city, look, that rascal trying to get us all killed. He trying to get us all killed. Joab with that big army outside, and they don't want nobody else in this place but him. And you can see him standing up in there with that mookie head. Come on, somebody. I mean, he had a big old giant head on him. He standing up there, thought he going to hide in the city and get away from David and get away from Joab. With his mookie cell. Come on, somebody. The Bible said they took him, they held him down, and this woman who was wild had his head chopped off and made a deal with Joel, the captain of David's army. And the Bible said that she took his head and threw it over the city wall. One wise woman spared the whole city. Your actions as a believer in the body of Christ, when you're going through, Lord, just give me a holy chance. Give me an opportunity to prove myself that I can live right and that I can walk right. If you make some mistake, Lord, give me a holy chance. If you curse, Lord, give me a holy chance. If you lie, Lord, give me a holy chance. If you backslide, Lord, give me a holy chance. If you drop out, Lord, bring me back and give me a holy chance. Praise God. This is Pastor Watkins from Community Revival Outreach Ministries. I trust that you enjoyed that wonderful service we just uh, had, and I trust the Lord that it touched your heart and your spirit, and it also inspired your soul. But beyond just listening to a message, we also ask you to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And how you do that, you just simply ask and bow before Christ. And if you're willing to lay hands upon your TV or bow your heads right where you are or sitting, if you just bow your head with me and we'll pray the prayer of faith. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for all things in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That you forgive us of all our sins and have mercy upon our soul. And that not only you save us, O oh Lord, from our sins, but, O oh Lord, that you would sanctify our hearts and sanctify our souls, as well as, O oh Lord, baptize us with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. We accept you, O oh Lord, into our hearts and our life. We confess our sins and we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that God raised him from the dead. And by believing and accepting this, O oh Lord, we claim to be saved in his holy name. We give thanks and praise for all things. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I trust the Lord that your heart is fixed with the Lord and that your blessing will be assured and that you'll come out and fellowship with us. And if not with us, your, your own local church in your area and that God will be a blessing to you until we see you again. Take care and God bless. Bye-bye.